Good morning, everyone. Welcome to part two of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh series. Um, before we start this session, let's just close our eyes in prayer. Abba Father, thank you for this opportunity we have this morning to gather in your name. Thank you that we can learn more of your word, your truth, the treasures that is locked up in your word. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and fill this place, that you will come and fill your this session with your presence, that we will feel your burning fire inside of us, that you will touch my mouth so that I will only speak words from Abba Father, not out of my own, and that we will receive new revelation today, so that we will fully understand your role, Holy Spirit, and how we can bear the fruit that is in the likeness of the image of our Father in our lives. We praise you and we love you, Lord. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Amen. Um, so yes, as I mentioned, we are busy with part two. And um, last week, we looked at part one, which was... Um, the, is the Holy Spirit a real part of your life? And in this week, we will look at understanding how the Holy Spirit works in our lives and how we then start to bear fruit that looks like the image of our Father, fruit that is desirable for our Father and that, that displays the character of our Father. So just a quick recap, we looked at the Trinity of God last week, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how they function separately but together as one unit because we cannot separate um, them from each other. We looked at how the Holy Spirit is a gift that we receive from our Father, the breath of life that he breathes into us, um, and how we are created as body spirit and soul dimensions and how these three work together and how if we repent and we start living as a new creation we start operating out of the spirit and it starts to take over our soul and our body dimensions and we no longer operate from a fleshly perspective and the choices we make the condition of our hearts changes within our soul dimension because we are led by the Spirit, the Holy Oil of our Father. The Holy Spirit becomes evident in our lives and we start to walk in obedience towards our Father's instructions and his rhythm. The word said that a, says that a person is known by his fruit and a tree that does not bear fruit will be cut off. So if we look at this fruit, this process of being made holy to be able to bear fruit that is acceptable to our Father that displays his character. What does this mean? So firstly, I see my picture is not showing, um, <laughs> but there was a beautiful picture here that is um, a picture of a heart. Um, when I see the slides on the group, you, you will be able to see, but it's a beautiful picture of a heart that um, has an open door in it. And it shows that if we go into the secret place, if we spend intimate and quiet time with our Father, He comes into our hearts and we really experience the fullness of Him, the fullness of His character, because we set time apart, which is only for us and Him. Um. Sorry, I'm just moving here that you guys can see me clearly. Okay, so last week we touched a bit on what does it mean to become set apart for the Holy Spirit to equip, anoint, and appoint us into our calling, to seek intimacy with Abba and at his, sit at his feet to allow him to teach us. As I mentioned, to have this open door in our hearts for him to allow him to come and fill us. So this is called the process of sanctification or the process of becoming holy through refining fire. When we look at gold, it has to undergo immense heat before it can melt and become pure gold. Apostle Catherine says that 
the anointing that you receive from the Father does not come overnight. You have to go through a process of refining fire to be strong enough and able to handle the anointing. So we have to go through this process of difficulty so that we become strong, so that we become equipped for this anointing that our Father wants to give us. Every true anointed vessel has to go through a refining process, a wilderness period where our characters is formed, shaped, and molded, where you enter the secret place of Yahweh and sit with him to teach you. He becomes your teacher. And this wilderness process is not an easy process. If you think of the Israelites when they were in the wilderness for 40 years, this was a process where they had to be refined, where they had to be obedient, where they had to trust unconditionally, where they were shaped and molded into this character that they had to become in order to enter the promised land. So I've put these, you can call it steps um, of refining or stepping into your anointing that comes from the book of Martin van der Merwe. You can also look at the, the resource list at the end. But um, he looked at the process of sanctification of Abram, Jacob, Joseph, and Elijah. And then he summarized it according to the following. So Shechem is the first place, and this is the place of disobedience. So these are all places in the Bible that you can go and look up that full mm -hmm. story. Sorry, did someone ask a question? <coughs> Can I just ask that everyone just um, mute themselves? <laughs> okay, 100%, we're back. Um, yes, yeah, so um, these are all places in the Bible where significant um, moments um, happen in the lives of these people that we are studying, of, of Abram, Jacob, Joseph, and Elijah. Um, but the first place is called Shechem, and this is the place of disobedience. So this is the place of wrestling, wrestling with God, reaching a place where you understand that if I rely on my own strength, if I want to do this on my own, then I won't be able to do it. I need our Father and the working of His Holy Spirit to bring me through a process of transformation, to bring me through a process of sanctification. Then you reach Chalchal, which is the place of repentance. It's repenting of our sins and asking Holy Spirit to reveal to us where we still need to repent. And then Betel, of Betel, which is the place of prayer, the house of God. This is the place where I've now started to rely on our Father's strength. I've repented and then I enter into prayer. I enter into his house. Learning to trust what it means to trust him, to rest in him, to lay everything down, to fully submit to him. And this is the place where he brings us into the Holy of Holies and fills us with the glory of his presence. So this is really where we sit at his feet. We start to learn his character and he starts to teach us. He becomes our teacher. Um, I also want to mention here how important it is that we rely, it's good to listen to teachings and it's good to um, have fellowship and it's good to go to church and it's good to learn from other um, people in Christ, from fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. But it's also so important that our first priority always needs to be to learn directly from the Father through the leading of the Holy Spirit. We need to focus on getting to the pure word. We need to pray. We need to um, sit at Abba's feet and spend one-on-one -on -one time, face-to-face -face time with him. And then Jericho, which is bondage. And this is the place where the Holy Spirit starts to break down all of the strongholds in your life. Because these strongholds is what keeps you from... Um, what keeps you from moving into this fullness, this life of fullness, um, this new um, experience, this, this um, revelation, supernatural revelation of Holy Spirit from the Word. So we need to break down these strongholds because the enemy uses it to cover our lives, 
to um and but we need to cover our eyes our spiritual eyes but we need to ask holy spirit and the blood of the lamb to cover us so that our spiritual senses can be awakened and then the place of death is the jordan so this is to die to self to die to this world um, and this is the place where the spiritual meets the physical and the soul, where these three dimensions become one. And we start living. We are not from the, uh, we, are not, we are in the world, but not from the world. So we no longer seek the desires of the world, but we seek the desires of our Father. So our priorities shift from what we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to, um, to prioritize what Abba Father wants. He becomes our passion. He becomes our desire. So the desires of our flesh no longer overrule our lives, but the desires of the Spirit, because we love Abba Father and we start to be transformed. And then lastly, it is return. Oh, no, sorry. Then it's the promised land. This is where you receive your anointing. You receive your mantle. You enter into this promise that Abba Father has been giving you because you are ready. Your character is shaped and your character is formed. And then you return. You return to the world because this is where the work begins. Doesn't mean that the moment you receive your calling and you're anointed, it's easy. David still had to be king. As a king, there's so many challenges. So in the world, we will face so many challenges. But we need to walk out in our calling through the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we can bless those around us. On biblicallifestyle.org, the rabbi son said that the meaning and purpose of life, our burning bush moment, our lech lecha call, in Hebrew this means to go or to go forth, is to be set apart and become dedicated to become holy. Our awakening to our true identity and our essential role in the grand plan of redemption. Our glorious falling as sons and daughters of the Holy One, setting us up in a position to be a blessing to the rest of the world and to the nations. So when our Father anoints us, he looks at the condition of our hearts. Do we want to be anointed for our own glory? to receive fame or fortune or riches and gold of this world? Or do we want to receive our anointing, our calling, our purpose from him to grow his kingdom and for his glory? So this is where we know that we have been transformed because he wants to transform us into a tabernacle that is a sacred space for the spirit to dwell in. We need to align all that we are with him in order to enter the promised land. His priesthood, his anointing. So he wants to make us his priests, depending on the condition of our heart. So as we said here, the change of everything, the foundation of everything is to change our heart. He says that he wants to give us a heart of flesh and he wants to remove the heart of stone. He wants to give us a new mind. He wants to change our thinking. So remember in the previous slide, I said that now you enter, you return to the world. This is a continuous process of transformation. We don't just receive our calling and now we walk in it and everything is moonshine and roses. No. Yes, we received our calling. We've been through a process of sanctification. But now we need to walk in it. We need to constantly transform and renew ourselves. We need to change our programming and our patterns, our mind, which is created according to the nature of our hearts. So as our hearts renews, as Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us as acceptable tabernacles, as a safe sanctuary for him, he starts to change our hearts which changes our thinking because our thinking, our mind is connected to what is going on inside of our hearts. And this will change our choices, the type of choices we make. So John 15 verse two says that every branch which is a part of me, but fails to bear fruit will be cut off. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. Our souls have patterns that needs to that comes from our mindsets that needs to be changed, that needs to be restored. 
Because if our patterns, our thinking, is according to the way of the serpent, then we will make choices that reflect the image of the serpent and we will bear fruit that reflect the image of the serpent. And this keeps us from the revelation and a lifestyle of Shama. But if God changes our programming and our patterns, he gives us a new name, a new identity. Remember in the first week we said that our identity lies within the spirit realm and or in the spirit dimension because this was created from the start. This is who we are. The very source of who we are is Abba Father. So he wants to give us a new name, a new identity. And this choice comes from a place of obedience and repentance so we can experience fruitfulness, intimacy, and unity with him so that we can start to think like him, act like him, his pattern, his nature, and have a burning desire to follow him in our hearts. We need to allow his seeds to be released in us so that our choices can start bearing humble fruits, fruits that reflect his character. So um, this is the process of transformation. And this is when we go through the tabernacle daily. We firstly start at the gate. This is where we reflect and identify on what type of fruit. We test our fruit. What type of fruit do I bear? What do I need to reflect on? What do I need to change? Then we come to the altar of sacrifice. This is where we bring offers to, to Abba Father as num Numbers 28 verse 4 says that we need to bring offers to him in the morning and in the evening. So this is where we repent, where we hand over, where we give everything of us to, to him. And this is the place where I spoke about earlier, where we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us. But this is something that we need to do daily so that we can become more and more and more holy like our Father wants us to become. Then we get to the wash basin. This is where we cleanse our hearts. This is where he looks at the condition of our hearts. We pour out our hearts towards him and we ask him, search my heart, O oh God. Show me where my heart is not in alignment with you. Then when we enter the holy place, this is where we get the menorah or the candlestick on this picture, which is the revelation, the light that comes from Holy Spirit, which reflects on the table of shoe bread, that is the manna, the bread, the, the word of life. So the Holy Spirit gives us, shines light on the word of our Father to give us that true revelation. But next or in the last week of the series, we will talk more about the menorah and the sevenfold spirit. Then we get to the altar of incense. This is where we ask our Father and his presence to fill this place. So when they lit up the incense, the smoke fire or the, the uh, Ruach Volker, um, the smoke clouds filled the holy place. And this is... Um, God's presence that fills this place. So we need to ask him to come and fill us with his presence so that we can move through the veil that is torn through Yeshua and we can enter the holy place, the holy of holies. We cannot enter the holy of holies if we have a hardened heart. This place is a blockage to enter into his presence, to have this experience of the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. The Holy of Holies is somewhere that we need, is the place we need to enter daily so that we can experience true intimacy with our Father. We will look in more detail that at the tabernacle in February when Yedaya will come and share more with us. But I just want to highlight here that we see the tabernacle uh, as something that is only spoken about in the Bible. Or the Holy of Holies is, is a place we cannot dare to enter. But because Yeshua died for our sins, this is a place we can enter daily. This is a place where our Father dwells, the Spirit dwells. This is where we can experience true intimacy with Him, where we can sit with Him. And He wants us to come out of this religion of, I have a routine of how I read my Bible and how I pray and I have um, things that I need to tick off daily. He doesn't want us to be a checklist kind of child or have a checklist kind of relationship with him. He wants us 
to come out of this religion, to move into his holy presence as the spirit leads us, to take off our shoes of self, our self shoes, and walk in humility to become a living sacrifice, to become holy and consecrated unto him. Pride keeps us from moving in the spirit. When we become humble, we are able to forgive, walk in obedience, rely on God's strength and not in our own. But walking in intimacy daily is when you become so close that you are one. You meet our Father face to face and you transform in, in his presence. So walking out our calling means that we need to be rooted in him. This concept, I shared it yesterday on Instagram as well. I can't remember who did the post, but it's so profound that you are rooted, but you move forward with him. And this is just how amazing God is. He, there's so many um, concepts in the Bible. They explain it in the post as well, that if you look at it from a human perspective, it doesn't make sense. But if you look at it from a, with your spiritual eyes, your spiritual senses, you understand that because you are rooted in him, you are able to move forward. You are able to walk in your purpose because that is where your life, your strength, your, your food comes from. Um, and then you can also go and read Colossians 2, verse 6 to 7. Um, when we look at, we remain rooted in him. Just as we receive the Messiah, we remain united with him, deeply rooted with, in him. And we are continued to being built up through trusting him. He teaches us the way that we are to go. And we start overflowing with thanksgiving. And then lastly, we need to become a spirit-filled warrior of God. So a spirit-filled person is someone that shows love, creative power, they are transformed, and they are focused on others. But they also operate in the gifts and the fruit of the spirit. They are known by their fruit. So I think um, there's so many other scriptures that I really want to, to uh, mention here. But I think we should move over due to time. Um, before I move into the last part of the session, I just want to read 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, So all of us with faces unveiled see as in a mirror the glory of God and we are being changed into his very image from one degree of glory to the next by Adonai the Spirit. This is so important. Our faces are unveiled because we are in the Holy of Holies with him. And we start mirroring the glory of God. We start transforming in his image. How? Through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that fills us. So we are changed into his image from one degree of glory to the next by his Spirit. Fruit is birthed and grown within us over time. So as we walk intimately with our Father and keep in step with him, keep his instructions, walk in obedience, we are continuously transformed and we start to bear fruit that looks like our Father. Our actions and our choices start to be modified and demonstrate that we are set apart, we are priests of Adonai. You can also go and read 2 Timothy 3, verse 10 to 17. Here it says that because we closely followed him, because he teaches us, because of the instructions and steadfastness that we stand in, we will start to bear fruit that looks like him. So we all know Galatians 5, verse 22 to 24, where the fruit of the Spirit is given to us. But I've included here a short description um, of each of the fruits of the Spirit, just to make it practical and just um, so that we can see, but what does it look like to have love, to have joy, to have peace, patience, kindness? Um, I compiled these um, short descriptions of the fruits of the Spirit um, from a document that my, my mother created. I've also linked the document at the end of this, res this, this um, slide deck's resource list. So you can go and read that document. It also is written from a perspective of wellness. So by bearing the fruit of the spirit, how do I 
um, experience wellness and, and, and prioritize wellness in my life. That means to be well in body, soul, and spirit, to have a balanced life. Um, so I'm not going to go through each of these today. I really wanted to, but our time is a bit short. But um, I also just want to highlight this to say that God gave each of us a fingerprint that no one else has. So we can leave an imprint that no one else can. So our mantle, our anointing, our calling is different to each and every one of us. And only you have that fingerprint. Only you can leave that imprint on someone else's life. But you can only enter in to this calling, to this anointing, once you go through this process of fire, this process of sanctification, so that the Holy Spirit can start to transform you, so that you can start to bear these fruits. Um, no one who has the Father keeps on sinning, because the seed planted by God remains in him. 1 John 3 verse 9 says that if there is no seed, there is no fruit. So let us not grow weary of doing what is good, for if we don't give up, we will in due course reap the harvest. Dan Kimball said that the fruit of the Spirit wasn't intended to be a list of goals for us to produce. It is the Holy Spirit who produces this fruit. So as we become transformed, we start to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But this is not something that happens overnight. It is a constant process of moving through the tabernacle. It is a constant process of seeking Abba Father intimately, of asking Holy Spirit to reveal to us which part of our hearts still needs to be replaced with the heart of flesh. Where is those places of stone inside of your heart that you still need to remove? I want to conclude with this. Pulling weeds and planting seeds. That's the story of life. We are individual lots on which either weeds of selfishness or fruit of the Holy Spirit grows and flourishes. My heart is really that you will start to move through this process of sanctification if you are ready in your wilderness, that you will stay steadfast so that you can start to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit that flourish, that someone will look at your tree and they will see this big, beautiful, fresh, juicy fruit, and that they will want to be like you, to become like you, because they see the character of God in you, not because of how you look physically or because of um, who you are from a worldly perspective, but because you reflect the glory of our Father. And then these are the resources that are used. Um, the other books I did not link because I do not have electronic versions of these books. Um, and then I just want to close, before we close in prayer, just say that um, I will be sending through homework on the Rise Eves group after the session in preparation for our next session, because next week we will be looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So um, I will give all of the, the details on the group, but thank you for joining this week and um, may you really be blessed and go and study these scriptures that is given in, in, in um, the slide deck and really go and sit at Abba Father's feet, meet him face to face and ask him to reveal to we, you where you are in this process, this process of sanctification. Um, what is the fruit that you are bearing? Taste your fruit and really ask Holy Spirit to come and fill your hearts and your minds and your souls so that we are led not by our fleshly desires, but by the Spirit. So let's just close our eyes in prayer. Abba Father, thank you for this powerful message that you have brought to us today. Thank you that we have a deeper understanding of the working of your Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank you that we know that everything in your word is connected with each other and there is purpose in everything. You are a God of purpose. You are a God of detail. Thank you that we have free access to the tabernacle daily and that we can enter into the Holy of Holies and not just once a year, 
as the high priest had to do, Father. Thank you that we can meet you face to face. Thank you that you are our teacher. You guide us. You counsel us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come and reveal to us where there's still spaces in our hearts that is hardened, that is rock solid, that you want to come and replace with the heart of flesh so that we can bear the fruit of the Spirit and lead spirit-filled lives, spirit lives, so that we no longer bear fruit of the serpent, but the fruit of the character and image of our Creator, the way it was intended to be from the start. I want to bless each and every Eve that is here this morning, but also all of the Eves that were unable to attend today, Father. Bless them in this week ahead. May they feel your tangible presence, and may you teach them and guide them. And may they know that they are able to move through the door into your kingdom, Father. May you reveal your purpose to them. May they receive the anointing and the mantle, the unique fingerprint that you have given each and every one of them so that they can leave their imprint in the lives of those around them. We love you and we praise you. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, our first love. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Lucia. Yes, Gary. Hey, good morning. Can you please just repeat that verse to Timothy what? To do you have it with you? Yes, I do. Let me quickly just get it here. So it is to Timothy. Now there's it one. Two. Um, to Timothy three. Thank you. Seventy. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice week. Bye. Thank you, Trisha. Bye.